afternoon, everyone. I'd like to call this hearing of the Senate Jobs and Economic Growth Committee to order. Today is Wednesday, March 17th. Happy St. Patrick's Day to everybody. Uh, first on our agenda is Senate File 1262 with Senator Drayheim. Senator Drayheim, uh, feel free to begin whenever you're ready. Thank you, Chair Pratt and members, and, and thanks for uh, giving us a hearing on this important subject. Uh, as most of you know, I've been in the hospitality industry on and off for uh, 20 years, and uh, we've always struggled to attract good talent in that industry. And with with COVID, you know, the whole industry has um, been shaken, I, I guess, and we, we need to focus on on that and then there's a good program and um, we're asking for 250,000 in appropriation um, you know from from deed for a grant to st to the pro start and hospitality tourism management program which which is a uh, a well established proven and successful education program that helps young people advance careers in the hospitality industry and address critical long-term workforce shortages in that industry. And, and members, I think I will just go right to the testifier who I believe has a video. Great. Uh, yes, we have uh, Mr. Wogslin from Hospitality Minnesota. Welcome to the committee, Mr. Wogslin. Uh, please state your name for the record and feel free to begin when you're ready. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair, uh, members and staff. My name is Ben Wogsland. I'm the Director of Government Relations for Hospitality Minnesota. We represent Minnesota's restaurants, hotels, resorts, campgrounds. Uh, first of all, I just want to thank uh, Senator Dreheim for bringing this bill forward. This is a really important bill to our industry and to young people. Uh, you know, hospitality is one of the top drivers of jobs in Minnesota, supporting one in 10 jobs in our state. And these two programs, the, the Pro Start and Hospitality Tourism Management Program, uh, are successful national workforce programs that are already in uh, 100 Minnesota high schools and have trained over 5,000 students. Um, you know, these programs aren't just exciting culinary and presentation and safety skills uh, programs, but also uh, management skills. They teach how to work as a team, how to triage, multiple challenges under stressful situations, uh, how to price out a menu, how to create a business plan, and, and all kinds of other translatable skills. Uh, some of these programs even operate their own restaurants. Uh, some uh, create and, and maintain their own gardens or engage in food donation, other charitable uh, type of activity. You know, hospitality is really about service and, and, and culinary and hospitality programs are growing in popularity and demand, uh, which is very strong as students learn more about their opportunities in this industry and, and their future. And, and for many of them helps them find their dream job. Uh, I'd like to play just a brief video to explain the programs in a little bit more detail. And it's gonna feature a young man named Josh Walbolt, who's just an incredible young man, came up through the Elk River program, uh, a Pro Start program. Uh, you know, and as a young man has already helped open five restaurants himself as a chef. Um, so I'm going to, with that said, share my screen here and let you guys take a look at this. Can you all see that? Until... Thank you, man. Sorry. What is there we go. Thank you. I didn't know I could have a profession cooking until HMEF. What is Hospitality Minnesota Education Foundation? The mission of Hospitality Minnesota Education Foundation, HMEF, is to educate and develop future employees and leaders for our industry and to promote hospitality as an industry of great opportunity. ProStart and programs like this are the future of the restaurant industry, of the hotel industry, of the resort industry. This is where our, our people are gonna come from. The ProStar program, the reason why I, I started cooking. It was that competitive field and that learning I had in the classroom and it was transferred outside the classroom and working with chef mentors while I'm in high school. Food in general is fun. So you're making food, dealing with food, being able to eat it after you make it and see that what you made is like amazing. 
is the best part. Number one, they get to work with chef mentors in the field. So they have all of this experiential learning strategies and activities that are available to them with being able to go and tour the industry of hotels as well as restaurants and what is the behind the the scenes look and the skills that are needed in the field. They come in and work with the students in the schools, the tremendous scholarships that are available for our students to help them transition more successfully to post-secondary. HMEF exists to implement two career building educational programs that promote the hospitality industry in Minnesota high schools. Hospitality and tourism industry is a major economic driver in Minnesota, yet finding qualified candidates can often be a challenge. It's estimated over the next eight years that this industry will add over three million new jobs. The hospitality and tourism management program provides students with the knowledge and the skills needed to compete for jobs in this really exciting career pathway. You know, there's room at the table for every single person to find their niche. And it's really exciting to be able to work with high school students and help them find something that if you love this, there are a multitude of different areas that you can go in and just kind of give them that little nudge and let them go from there. I feel like it prepares us for the outside world. It gets us out of our comfort zone and it makes us use our minds to be creative. It also helps a lot with teamwork management and also manage our time. HMEF helped me uh, in high school. I got a scholarship through them, winning the state championship for restaurant management competition. And now it's what I do every day. HMEF has been there for me the entire time, throughout my entire high school career. If I really look at it, like how, how much impact they had. Hospitality Minnesota Education Foundation is the future of the entire tourism industry. And we need to continue to find ways to support it and grow it. Chair? So. Go ahead. Thank you, uh, everyone, for, for watching that video. Um, uh, gives you a little flavor of what these programs are about. It was mentioned in there that there's a, a statewide competitions and a national competition under the Pro Start as well that these kids often compete for. Uh, this year, that's going to be a little bit limited with COVID, but we do have a competition coming up here in, in April. I'm happy to talk to any of you about it if you're interested in trying to witness that. Uh, our foundation also has given about $800,000 in scholarships to young people trying to advance uh, through Pro Start and HTMP over the last 10 years. So really fantastic programs. Uh, what the bill before you does, members, is uh, puts a $250,000 grant in place and will allow up to 50 high schools to get grants of $5,000 to help offset costs for teacher training, uh, materials and things of that nature. And as we talk with you know teachers and districts and principals, these are some of the things that they tell us uh, they need a little help with in terms of an incentive to try to grow these programs. Again, uh, already in 100 Minnesota high, high schools, uh, we're aware of about 20 or so that would like to add these programs on. Uh, that's a process that takes about a year working with the Department of Education to get the curriculum and re everything up and running. So really appreciate all of you um, listening to this and considering it here today and to you, Mr. Chair, for hearing the bill. And with that, I'll stand for any questions. Uh, thank you. Do we have any uh, any questions for Senator Graham or Mr. Wogsland? Uh, I have I have a question, uh, Mr. Wogsland. How is this uh, How has this program worked in the past, and help me better understand why you're seeking uh, a state grant? Sure. So the program has worked in the past. There there is money that the foundation has uh, put in for scholarships and things like that. It's a national program. Pro Start is through the National Restaurant Associations. Schools uh, have initiated the program to try to meet the needs of, of, of their students for culinary training, for tourism. And we know that there's a lot of jobs out there, uh, you know, to be met. Uh, this is a, a career path that you can ladder up very quickly. As a matter of fact, I, my understanding is in restaurants, uh, eight and 10 managers started at an entry level position uh, or nine and 10. Uh, and so 
the program is really meant to, to provide students with the opportunity to see what all those uh, chances are out there for them uh, at a young age. Uh, and I talk to people in the industry all the time that say, boy, I wish I would have had a program like this when I was younger, because although I landed in hospitality, it might have taken me a while to get there uh, eventually. So the idea is to really um, show young people what's out there for them. And, and maybe this is a good fit for them and a good career path. So um, th these high school programs, uh, again, we're trying to expand it to as many high schools as possible. We're talking to districts, talking to teachers. And the idea of the grant program is kind of uh, similar to the SciTech or the, the, the Carts to Careers program that you guys have funded in the past or the, the government has uh, to try to do a little bit of that kind of private public match because uh, private's putting some money into this and has been for some time. Uh, we think it, it would be great if the state could help support these schools and this program uh, in this in this much needed area. I hope that answered your question. Uh, kind of. So, so it sounds like the, the grant is going to be used for expansion of the program beyond where it is today. How many high schools are you in or, or students are you serving today? And how many do you think you can serve with the, uh, with the grant program? And by the way, I don't know if you support Shakopee, but I know they've uh, implemented the academies of Shakopee with an entire program based around hospitality. Yes, the program is in Shakopee. Um, and so, you know, a $5,000 grant is certainly not going to be enough for a, a given program to, you know, get a commercial kitchen or anything like that. But when we did talk to teachers and others that are in the program, uh, this is an amount that they said would be a, a modest amount that would help them offset some of those materials costs for books and for teacher training, which is ongoing for the teachers. And they do have to update their resources from time to time. So to be able to expand, again, we've got 100 uh, programs up and running in 100 high schools right now. And to con continue to be able to expand that, the idea of this bill is that it would incentivize some of those schools to be able to do it a little bit easier. Okay. Any other questions for Senator Graham or Mr. Wagsland? Okay, seeing none. Senator Graham, uh, any any closing comments? Well, I, I just want to remind people that you know I, I witnessed firsthand. You get people interested in a career um, or or a field, they really take off. Um, you know, I I had uh, hundreds of employees in, in the hospitality industry, and and to watch them go on you know, to ownership, uh, managers. I had one that was managing six restaurants. Um, you know, it's really fun to watch them. You know, they might start out as a part-time after high school or in high school. They might go off to college, but they got that bug for the hospitality industry and, and they can make a good good career out of that industry and, and make a good, good wage. So I, I think it's a great idea and I, I hope you can find some funds for it here. Thank you. Well, thank you. And, you know, we certainly know the hospitality industry is, has taken the beating of, of this recession, um, you know, over the last year. And, and uh, certainly we want to see it recover uh, as quickly as possible. And hopefully uh, this could be a start for that. So thank you. And thank you, Mr. Wagsman, for your testimony today. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members. Uh, Next, we have uh, this bill will be laid over for possible inclusion. Uh, next, we have Senator Housley with Senate File 1935. Senator Housley, uh, whenever you're ready. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I have an oral amendment that I, I just would like to do right now, if I could, uh, on line 1.20. The word because should be changed to or. The word because changes the whole meaning of the bill. So if, if I could move um, that oral amendment, line 1.20, change the word because to the word or. Okay. Um, Ms. Uh, Doyle Fontaine, do you want to read back the amendment for members? Sure. Um, Senator Housley, it ha um, that's my understanding that that's the appropriate place for the amendment to go, but it was on... Um, Page page one, line twenty, delete because and insert or. Okay, members, uh, this is the first stop for this bill, and it's an author's amendment. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. That motion carries. Senator Housley, now that your bill's in the order you want it, feel free to continue. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, we're calling Senate File 1935 the Save Our Stages Bill. 
Um, our Minnesota concert halls and music venues are, are still in the midst of a crisis. They've been among the hardest hit small businesses, uh, severely financially impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, mass gatherings were the first to close and will be the last to be allowed to reopen. While many Minnesota businesses have been able to open and generate some income with takeaway or online sales, music venues are still closed. By remaining closed, these spaces are incurring millions of dollars in collective net losses. Uh, partially increased capacities are not tenable for these spaces. It is not profitable for these small businesses to open at reduced capacities. Even with the, the recent increase to 50%, it doesn't work for these small venues. Uh, for example, a Parkway Theater can only fit 93 people, which is 25%, and still allow for the six feet of distance between parties. And the Hennepin Theaters would be um, Orpheum at 21%, State at 23%, and Pantages at 32% within those guidelines. So um, you can't open when you can't have more than that capacity. Uh, music venues and clubs were excluded from all the previous state pandemic relief based on their NAICS codes. Some may have applied for and received one small ten dollars to $20,000 grant from their individual county, but even our smallest venues are bleeding out at least $20,000 a month, and now they've been closed for 12 months. Um, one in my district said he has lost a million dollars. The federal shuttered the federal shuttered venue operators grant has not been dispersed yet, and the application is not even open nearly four months after being signed into law. I don't know if any other members are getting emails on that, but that hasn't gone anywhere yet, and, and our constituents are, are waiting for some sort of relief. And there's no guarantees that any Minnesota businesses are even going to receive it, as they'll be competing with venues all over the country. Uh, targeted, targeted stimulus from Minnesota is the only way to ensure that Minnesota businesses will receive the relief they desperately need to reopen and aid in the economic recovery of the state. Um, that, Mr. Chair, I have some testifiers. Uh, okay, Senator Housley. First, we have uh, Miss Lee from uh, Midwest Music Fest. Welcome to the committee. Please state your name and feel free to begin when you're ready. Thanks for hearing us today, Mr. Chair and members. Uh, my name is Abby Lee, and I'm the Managing Director of Midwest Music Fest down in Winona, Minnesota. Uh, Midwest Music Fest is a local music festival in its 12th year of operation. We're an all-ages, multi-stage, multi-venue, multi-genre music event that showcases up-and-coming acts from all over the country. Our events help facilitate a rich vein of networking that happens and a sense of community among musicians, music industry folks, locals, and our audiences. At Midwest Music Fest, we've faced severe cuts to our income over the last year. We had no other choice than to cut our two permanent staff down to part-time, myself included, uh, to let go of all of our part-time staff, and now we're at the point where we need to overhaul our entire staffing structure. This year, we are planning our first live event in Minnesota on May 15th. Uh, we're planning it for 250 attendees and 14 artists. Pre-COVID, we would have had over 3,000 attendees with 60 artists performing on 10 stages spread throughout our downtown. We would have had 10 staff and over 100 volunteers. We've done, um, we've done economic impact studies in partnership with our local university, which show that our two-day fest brings in over a quarter million dollars to our local businesses. Reducing the event to only 250 people is a huge economic loss, not only for us, but for our small community of 25,000 people. This event is one of our main revenue sources. Um, our monthly bills for rent, insurances, licenses, software, and all the other things haven't gone down. They'll stay the same while our income has essentially gone away. There's no way we'll be able to make money on such a small event for so few people, but we're committed to doing it because we know our community needs it now more than ever. We've been offering virtual programming and some outdoor limited capacity programming, but none of this provides the income we need long-term to stay in business and continue to provide an event that contributes to our local economy. We want to continue to bring people together to enhance the cultural life of our little river town, but we need help putting things back together and hopefully scaling things back up over the next year. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have uh, Mr. Carlson from uh, TAK Music Venue. Welcome to the committee. Uh, please state your name for the record and feel free to begin when you're ready. Yes, yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair and members uh, for hearing us today. Uh, my name is Todd Carlson. Uh, I am the owner of TAC Music Venue in Dilworth, Minnesota. 
Uh, we opened in December of 2018. Um, we're a live music venue with capacity of 529 people. Uh, we host live entertainment events, mainly consisting of music, uh, theater, comedy. Uh, we also do some private events such as weddings, graduation parties, class reunions, uh, and they all usually have music involved with them. In compliance with Governor Walz's executive orders, since March 16th of 2020, we've been either closed 100% or only allowed to open at 25% recently being able to open at 50% starting just this past Monday. We must still stop serving food and beverages at 11 p.m. There's no definite timeline as to when this will change. Uh, it'll take time to rebuild, to book shows, and especially the national tours that just aren't out on the road right now. Uh, it just makes it hard for them to tour. Uh, I know that I've lost 60 events uh, that were actually booked uh, into TAC over the last year with an estimated gross revenue loss of about $256,000. The impossible thing to know is what didn't get booked. Um, I'm assuming there's probably another 150 to 200 thousand dollars that didn't get booked because of the pandemic. A challenge for for my venue specifically is we're located next to North Dakota, right on the border almost, and they have been much less restrictive with their um, restrictions, I guess. Uh, and I've, I've lost a lot of business uh, across the river. So the, the main ask is, you know, since we complied with the orders, um, we just need help to cover our fixed operating costs uh, that we have not gone away, uh, such as our rent or mortgage, insurance, utilities, and property taxes. Property taxes. As uh, Senator Housley said earlier, the federal save our stage is, uh, uh, while a great act, uh, there's been no funding from that. We can't even apply at this point, so we aren't sure when we're gonna see anything from that. And there is no guarantee that we will receive anything. Um, as, as of this point, there hasn't been any targeted funding from the state uh, for the live entertainment industry as we've kind of fallen through the cracks. Um, TAC uh, has received a couple of small grants, but we need much more to, to sustain. Um, I've had to basically go through my entire personal savings, including my, col my kids' college fund. Um, so it's just gotten really tough. Um, we're not asking to make money, but just to help min minimize our, our past losses and then the future losses, uh, which we're still experiencing. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Uh, any questions for Senator Housley or any of her testifiers? So with with the change, oh, I'm sorry, Senator Hur, go ahead. Um, yeah, thank you for bringing this legislation forward. I think this will open, broaden the support for our small, you know, operation, you know, and uh, I can't wait to, to tell my community uh, a community theater in my district. And I, I, at the same time, I, I also uh, want to pose as a question too. You know, I can't wait to tell them that perhaps this bill would uh, will include support for them in terms of uh, tax exemption or, you know, some form of credit. So, but a small theater like Mounds Theater in particular in my district is a community theater. Would, they, would this bill help them? Mr. Chair and Senator Herr, absolutely. That is um, every every uh, venue that has a stage that it, either they sell tickets or it's free to the public, but they've had to shut down during this whole pandemic would be eligible for these grants. Wonderful. Yes, uh, I can't wait to tell them because I did spoke on the floor uh, when we roll out uh, our COVID-19 relief, you know, to, to large uh, entertainment venue, you know, and, and I think that this is this is a good build. And you know, so again, I can't wait to tell them. Thank you. And um, Mr. Chair. Senator Housley. Um, Mr. Chair and Senator Herr, it is, it, these venues are so important to our communities, not just for the people that attend the, the concert or the, the event, but to everything around, every um, business or every um, um, retailer or the whole community in general, uh, lodging and, and travel and restaurants. Um, all of that is impacted by these community theater stuff or these these stages. So if the stages close permanently, I mean, that's a huge impact. The trickle down is just so humongous that uh, we need to stop the bleeding somewhere. So this will help your community theater and Todd and Abby's and mine and the one up in Walker that I just talked to about an hour ago. Um, yeah, so thank you. Uh, so Senator Housley, let me ask a, a question. We have a, a, a large event in Prior Lake called the Lakefront Music Fest. Um, two years ago, we had Brad Paisley, uh, Riley Green, um, Steve Miller Band. Uh, we're expecting to bring in Lady A, 
uh, 38 special, um, you know, pretty big, pretty big axe. Uh, but it's run through the Rotary Club along with, uh, you know, the, um, the school district foundation and, and some others that are all nonprofits. Uh, is it your intent that they would be able to qualify for these grants as well? Mr. Chair, uh, yes, that is a, a targeting those two, because I can tell you if they don't get any funding or any help, there will be no music fest. Um, it will it'll probably be canceled for this year. Um, so they're all they were all waiting for these federal dollars and those just stalled and who knows where they're going to go. And we can't guarantee that. But if they if they don't get if Prior Lake uh, doesn't get any help, um, there will be no music fest there. So, yes, it's intended for them, too. And have you requested a fiscal note so we know how many of these venues um, or events might be uh, might be eligible? Yeah, right now we have a blank appropriation in the general fund um, from the general fund, but yes, we are requesting a fiscal note. Okay. I know we're behind on fiscal notes. I just thought I'd ask if kind of where we were in the process. Any other questions for Senator Housley or any of her testifiers? Okay. But Mr. Chair, I think Senator Dreheim popped his hand up. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not seeing the raised hand function. So if I miss you on the video, I apologize. Senator Dreheim. Thank you, Chair. I just wanted to thank uh, Senator Housley and, and she stole most of what I was going to say. Uh, but, you know, I, I think, you know, having a venue myself and, and doing uh, a lot of live shows, uh, I sure miss it. And, uh, you know, it's one of the best parts about owning a venue is, is when you do have uh, uh, those those events, you know, if it be a dance or um, a concert. Um, but uh, I appreciate you moving this forward and thanks for keeping the spotlight on this. So Senator Housley and, and you know, maybe the Senator Drahan, would this, Senator Drahan, would this include your venue? You, you know, I'd have to read the bill a little closer, but I would think so. We, we hold, uh, um, you know, some, dance competitions and we do a lot of live music. I love live music. So it's something that, that I, I enjoy. Um, and, and you name, we've had polka festivals cause it's new home. Of course you have polka, uh, and German beer, but, um, so yeah, we'll, we'll have to see, uh, you know, uh, I'll have to read it a little cl closer, but, it, but I think important, you know, there's a whole bunch of different types of entertainment venues that have been hurt though. I think the most, and you know if, if this helps and then heard how senator housing's next bill i think would would definitely help help uh, places like mine mr well, chair yes yeah, senator housley if you'd like i can go over the if if you want to know which um venues what the parameters are what they need to qual qualify for to get it um yeah i read them but if you want to go over them go ahead and the reason i'm asking is that i know we did the uh the grant program back in in December, uh, but it only covered about the top 15 venues in the state. Uh, Mr. Chair, yes, and and this whole group was completely missed in that. Not your fault, but you know we were scrambling to help as, as many people as we could. But these this sector was left out of it. So those stages that would be eligible would be a business or a nonprofit is eligible for a grant if its principal place of business is in Minnesota, doesn't have any current tax delinquency with the Department of Revenue at the time of application, was restricted from operating above 25% of 250 attendees due to the COVID-19 executive order, Emplo employs no more than 60 full-time employees, uh, and meets the and the employee, that would be an, of an employee who works 30 hours per week of 130 hours per month on average. Uh, and meets these following revenue requirements. Uh, they derived at least 33% of the business's 2019 revenue from the sale of tickets for uh, sale of tickets for live events, or they're directly reliant on ticketed live events, but not directly in receipt of those ticket revenues because the event is free to the general public. That's where I had to put that or in um, before. So deed will award eligible businesses uh, or nonprofit grants of up to $500,000 or 25% of the business's gross revenue for 2019, whichever is less. Like I was telling you about the one that lost 900,000, they'd only get 
500,000. The grants can be used for business operations, payroll, rent or mortgage utilities and other business related expenses. So that's kind of, it's kind of pretty broad. Um, you still would have to apply for them, but all of them that everybody brought up, Senator Herr and Senator Pratt um, would be eligible. And oh. I think Senator Herr has a question, Mr. Chair, if you can't see his hand. Oh, there he is, Senator Herr. Oh, uh, thank you. Thank you, Senator Housley, <laughs> uh, for uh, uh, directed to me. Um, yeah, uh, since, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, can you tell me where is where this bill would be traveling next? I, I just think in terms of uh, whether it's going to go directly to the floor or whether we just want to reserve some time in case we need to make modification to be more inclusive. Uh, Senator Herr, the bill is going to the tax committee. Okay. Most that sounds of the, good. Yeah, most of the provisions outside of the grants will be in the, in, is in the jurisdiction of taxes. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Senator Housley, for presenting this. I suppose, you know, um, here this bill today kind of in some way justified the St. Patrick's Day today. I, I know that it's, it's not much, although it's connected to Irish root, but the St. Patrick's Day, uh, St. Patrick himself is more for gracious and for common folks and the smaller members of our society. So, you know, I, I just want to um, acknowledge that. And so happy thanks to St. Patrick's Day. Uh, any other questions for Senator Housley or any of her testifiers? Okay, uh, seeing none. Senator Housley, uh, any closing comments? And uh, feel free to make the motion to move it to taxes. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair, members, for hearing this bill. Like you've heard, it's so important for these business owners and for the communities that that support them and that the venue supports. Uh, so thank you. And hopefully, hopefully we can get something done on this to get some relief to our, our small business owners. I would like to move Senate file 1935 as amended uh, to be passed and re-referred to the tax committee. Uh, members on the Housley Amendment, all those in favor signify by saying aye, or on aye. the Housley motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Um, you're on your way to Texas, Senator Housley. Um, I believe you have the, uh, uh, the last bill on our agenda, uh, Senate File 1419. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This is um, relief grants. Senate file 1419 is a bill for relief grants for event centers. And first, I would like to move the A1 amendment that you should have. Uh, Senator Housley moves the A1 amendment. Members, this is the, uh, the first stop for this bill. And so it'd be an author's amendment. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Senator Housley to your bill is amended. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, as we just heard in the last bill, there's a lot of business that were affected by COVID, uh, but one of the groups also left out of the previous programs was our event centers. Not, not, not the stages, but the event centers. Uh, most of them have been closed for a year now, and up until recently, they could only hold events with 10 people. Uh, I was supposed to go to my niece's wedding that she was going to have 200 people at, and she postponed it three different times. Um, and now, now she's just pushed it out to an outdoor wedding in the summer. But I know that the place that she was supposed to have it in Stillwater uh, is really hurting because everything has been canceled for a year. Um, and these event centers are being uh, that are being closed impact a lot of people uh, besides the brides and the grooms and the attendees and the seminar hearings. They affect the caterers and the florists and the photographers. And again, the trickle down right down um, to to so many in the community. So what this bill does it and this is what the amendment did, it moves the capacity, which right now under the current executive order is at 50%, it's moving it to 75%. Um, so no, actually it's 250 people, but in the bill we're moving the capacity to 50% or 75%. I had in the bill it was 50%, now it's 75%, which is, it's, which is in line for the current executive orders for bars and restaurants. It, it doesn't really make much sense to me and to a lot of people that I'm sure you talk to when you can have a bar restaurant over here that can hold 500 people and at 50% capacity, they have 250. And, and I actually have one in my district that has the restaurant. And then over here, they have the, um, they have an event center 
that can hold 2,000 people, yet they're not allowed to have more than 250 people in there or whatever it's at. It's at 50 people right now. So anyway, this moves the capacity to 75% of whatever that um, event center can hold. It sets a grant program to help these struggling event centers um, for event centers with a capacity of 2,000 from 200 to 1,500, 1499, uh, that they've had a decline in sales of 30% or more from 2019 to 2020, um, that they had to be impacted by the executive orders in COVID-19, be located in Minnesota and owned by a Minnesota resident. They can have no tax liens um, and the grants are based on the size of the venue and the number of months closed with the cap on the maximum um, amount. And then priority is given to those that have not received grants from the December special session bill um, that we passed. And currently it's a, a blank appropriation and deed must report the use of the funds. So that is Senate file 1419 as amended, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Housley. Um, we have a couple of testifiers on your bill. First, we have uh, Mr. Jarchow. Jarchow, I hope I'm saying it right. Um, please state your name for the record and feel free to begin when you're ready. Okay, my name is Mike Jarko. You were close, you get butchered a lot. This is my wife, Wanda, next to me. We do have a prepared statement. We'll just read that. And if you have questions, you can do those at the end if you'd like. As I said, my name is Mike Jarko. My wife, Wanda, and I are owners of Grand Prairie Events in Laverne. We're a standalone event venue, which can accommodate up to 600 seated guests with options for four different room sizes. We have a prep kitchen for caterers, but do not provide food. We do not carry a liquor license, but bar service is available um, and can be secured for events. We are not attached to any type of hotel, motel, or lodging accommodations. Our small family owned business has been severely impacted by the restrictions set forth by Governor Walls. The restrictions resulted in numerous events and, and wedding receptions being canceled, many moving their events across the border to South Dakota. We lost 80% of our annual income from March 2020 to March 2021. Early on, we were encouraged to apply for the Southwest Initiative Foundation for Small Business Emergency Loan to assist with loss of business. We were denied. We fell through the cracks. We requested reconsideration, contacted our local legislative officials, and were encouraged when the ruling was overturned. The guidelines stated the funds may qualify for partial forgiveness. We received a loan of $35,000, but nothing was or has been mentioned since regarding forgiveness. In the fall of 2020, while we were still shut down, we received notice we would need to begin repayment of that loan. With no way to begin repaying this loan still being shut down, we were granted an extension. In April, our bank allowed us to defer three months of mortgage payments, which was helpful. However, we had to pay a $12,000 interest payment upon resuming the payments. The Laverne Economic Development Authority assisted us in securing a gap financing loan to con continue making the mortgage payments. The initial PPP funds were received, we received were in the amount of $6,600. Our banker commented on his frustration with people he knows who were not in need of the funding, yet getting large amounts, and the people who really needed it were not getting enough. Another hardship throughout all this is we did not qualify for unemployment. We were hopeful when it sounded like event centers would receive state grant funding, only to be discouraged that it was appropriated for event centers with seating capacity of 1,500 or more. We thought the funding was to help small businesses, but our business was too small. Going on a year now and not being able to function properly has us at the point where we will need to close our doors. Yes, we've been loaned $135,000. Yes, we were granted 65,000 through the county, the CARES money, but this will not replace the lost income, it will only help repay these loans. After losing business over this past year, not being able to advertise for something we cannot do, we would have difficulty rebuilding our business after such a trying year. And we'd be starting out behind due to the additional debt, loss of income and continued fear that may keep people from gathering. Even with the most recent loosening of restrictions, we are only able to operate at one third capacity due to the required six feet social distancing and limited numbers per table. It's very disheartening to hear of restaurants who have received more money than they know what to do with. And here we are not able to operate at all. 
and the majority of assistance has come in the form of loans, which only creates more debt. We have six children, two of whom will begin college in the fall and two more starting in the next two years. We have a family to support, and during this time, the only reason we have been able to survive is because we have a diversity of income. But we cannot continue to bail this sinking ship out. We have taken money out of our savings and retirement to keep the bills paid, which are still coming for utilities, taxes, insurance, previous advertising contracts, inspections, licensing, and so forth. We need to think of our children's education, educational future and our own. We built Grand Prairie events for our community and we have made sacrifices in the process. We are no longer able to do this. The restrictions put, for, put forth by the governor have crippled our small family business to the point of no return. We thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Jarko. Uh, next, we have Ms. Dvorak uh, with the New Prairie Park Ballroom. I know, your, I know your place well. Welcome to the committee. Please uh, state your name for the record and feel free to begin when you're ready. Thank you, Mr. Chair. My name is Linda Dvorak. I'm the finance officer for the Park Ballroom, a position I have held for over 13 years. The Park Ballroom in New Prague, Minnesota is an establishment that is an important fixture in the community of New Prague. It has been in operation and has never been closed since 1919 until March of 2020. We're not a full-time establishment, but a ballroom, open only when someone rents the space. Our fire code capacity is 1350, and we can seat approximately 800 comfortably for a sit-down dinner. In the year prior to the first shutdown in March of 2020, March 15 of 2019 to March 15 of 2020, we had a revenue of $276,000. In the year since the shutdown, March 15th of 2020 to March 15th of 2021, our revenue was $78,000. That's a 71.8% decrease in the revenue from the previous year. Even with a decrease in income, we still have all of our fixed expenses of utilities, insurance, maintenance, mortgage, taxes, and they average eight to $9,000 a month. We do have individuals in our community that have been helping with some of our maintenance at a minimal or no compensation, but without these volunteers, our maintenance costs would be much higher. Our ballroom provides a capability that no other facility in the 30 to 40 mile radius provides, not only for weddings and big celebrations, but we also provide a space for community events and other nonprofit organizations at a reduced or no cost rent, rent such as blood drives, scouting events, our American Legion, the New Prague Sportsman and VFW and many others. We have even been asked by two counties, Scott and Lee Seward, to set up COVID-19 vaccine centers if needed. This shutdown has not only decreased our revenue, but I'm sure it has decreased our suppliers as well. We don't need to order food or liquor. We don't need laundry items. We don't need a florist. We don't need people making cakes because we can't be opened. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, members, any questions for Senator Housley or any of our testifiers? Uh, we have Senator time. Thank you, uh, Chair, and thank you, Senator Housley, for uh, for bringing this bill forward and, and working on on these issues. You know, I just want to comment on the testifiers and thank you both uh, testifiers for for coming and speaking today. Um, you know, people that haven't been in this industry before don't understand that you book out a year or two in advance. So not only did we lose a year, we also lost bookings for for the future not that we didn't lose all bookings but they were reduced because people are unsure and um you know it, it's a tough i i, I feel the pain of, of both testifiers here because i'm in the same boat with my event center um you know the expenses don't quit the maintenance doesn't quit um you know, we, we have five HVAC systems in, in my building. And of course, you're shut down for, for 10 months straight. And what happens? You have HVAC issues and have to have someone come in and, and get them repaired. Um, but that, that's just part of owning a business. But I, I, I do think that this segment of, of the business community has been left out and uh, of, of help. And, and I, I think there's others, too that we need to look for that have been left out, the small guy, the Main Street business. 
Um, so Senator Pratt, I hope we can find some funds moving forward to, to help those people that have been forgotten. Thank you, Senator Graham. Any other questions for our testifiers? I, I have one for Ms. Dvorak and, and the Jarkows. Um, certainly when we did the, uh, the grant program in December, we, we, we set aside money for the large event centers, but it uh, felt like the counties had the best uh, insight into the smaller event centers to be able to, to provide those funds. You mentioned the loans and then a CARES, a CARES grant. Have either of you received grants from the state in the past through the counties, uh, either in June or in uh, December, January? I can answer that first if you don't mind, Linda. Um, in the June grant, we received $5,000. And in the last round where the county received $250,000 to divide amongst 27 different businesses that uh, were felt that maybe qualified. And of that, we received the largest grant because we were unable to do any curbside takeout or any other type of business. So we did receive 64,000 and change on that one. But like we said, that's just gonna go to cover loans that we've taken out. It was helpful though. Thank you. Yes, we, the Park Ballroom did receive two grants from the counties or from one from the county and one from the city, but it was a total of $17,000. Not a lot given your expenses. No. Just amazing that uh, you made it through the the Spanish flu pandemic, but uh, unfortunately, you couldn't make it couldn't make it through this one. The executive orders were just too too stringent. Yes. Uh, any other questions for uh, our testifiers? Okay, seeing none. Uh, Senator Housley, any closing comments? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair and members. I do I want to thank the testifiers for um, coming today. I'm so sorry for the, the last year and everything you guys have been through and how scary it, it must be and still is unless we can get some some help to, to venues like you and event centers. And um, otherwise, I'm worried about those six kids going to college. <laughs> we got to get them through. Um, but no, thank you. Uh, thank you again, Mr. Chair. This is really important for a lot of our, our event centers that were missed in all of the other grants um, to help them out. So thank you. Um, I don't even know where this is going next, Mr. Chair. Uh, Senator Housley, this is going to stay with us, so we'll be waiting for the fiscal note on it. Um, I know we've uh, talked with the Legislative Budget Office, uh, and they are in contact with Deed because um, we are way, way behind on getting fiscal notes for these bills. Great. So, uh, Senator Housley, we're going to go ahead and hold over Senate File 1419 for possible inclusion. I want to thank all of our testifiers today. Uh, for taking the time to be here with us. Um, normally, we'd like to have you at the Capitol, but uh, we're glad that you could participate with us via, uh, you know, via the technology. Um, I, I don't say this enough, but uh, it's important for us to hear the stories um, and the circumstances that you all face uh, in the real world as we do our work at the Capitol. So thank you very much. We appreciate it. Uh, members, uh, next week will be our last week of regular hearings. Um, the Senate will be taking the uh, Easter Passover break, and then we will be coming back with one regularly scheduled meeting um, to go through the, uh, uh, the bill for final deadline. Uh, members, is there any, any questions before we adjourn? Okay, seeing none, uh, we'll stand adjourned until Monday at three o'clock. Thank you. <laughs>